When a 35-year-old Clay Huntington came up with the idea for the Tacoma Pierce County Sports Hall of Fame in 1957 and the State of Washington Sports Hall of Fame three years later, who would have thought that recognizing individuals for their athletic accomplishments would be the foundation over 50 years later for the Banquet of Champions? Yet here we are in the Tacoma Dome celebrating our sports heritage with Clay, now 88 and beaming like a proud papa. With the induction of five members in the class of 2010, membership in the State Sports Hall of Fame climbs to 168. And speaking of climbing, the lives of two of our newest members, Jim and Lou Whitaker, have revolved around mountaineering since they were youngsters. Jim Whitaker is best known as the first American to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth, a feat accomplished on May 1st, 1963. And he also led the spectacularly successful 1990 Mount Everest Peace Climb. That put 20 men and women from three superpowers, the U.S., China, and the Soviet Union, on the summit of Everest. Lou Whitaker's climbing accomplishments are equally impressive. A three-day ascent of Mount McKinley in Alaska in 1960, an attempt to climb K2, the world's second tallest peak led by Brother Jim, and a successful ascent to the top of Mount Kanjunjunga in Nepal, the world's third tallest mountain. The twin brothers are unquestionably two of the world's greatest mountaineers. Dean Nicholson also knew how to get to the top, the top of the coaching fraternity, that is. After 14 years at Puyallup High, Nick amassed a 609-202 one-loss record at Central Washington University, including six NAIA Final Four appearances. 26 years at the top of his profession are testament to his ability to mold talented individuals into successful teams on the court. Go-karts, stock cars, super modifies, and figure eight racers, all part of the arsenal for Dennis Kitts as he mowed down the competition. But it was midget racing where he really shined, becoming one of the most successful WMRA drivers during the 1980s, the golden age of midget racing in the Northwest. Kitts was also a successful promoter and was ranked one of the top five drivers in the long history of Spanaway Speedway. A four-year letterman at Peninsula High, Gary Moore tossed an astounding seven no-hitters during his high school career and hit over 350 each season. That earned Moore a full ride to Oregon State, disdaining pro offers from the Cubs and the Yankees for a college education that led to a 25-year career in the Air Force. Deja vu indeed, as in the mid-50s, he truly was a force to be reckoned with on the mound. And now it's time to follow the bouncing ball. Marv Tomerick Jr., known as Tom, played for Marv Harshman at WSU before Harsh headed to Huskyville, where he coached Lorenzo Romar, who coached Isaiah Thomas of Curtis and Curtis Allen of Wilson. Isaiah is making headlines now, but Curtis Allen made them when he headed to Pullman to join the Cougar coaching staff. Curtis also shares the same name as the Curtis Vikings, winners of the 1971 Class AA State High School Championship. Two of their players, Mike Berger and Jim Ball, played basketball at Pacific Lutheran University, where Harshman also coached basketball. Harsh also kicked the last second field goal to defeat the National Power Gonzaga Bulldogs 16-13 in 1940. Casey Calvary never played football for Gonzaga, but he was a horse on the boards and a force to be reckoned with during a superlative career for the Zags. Got that? Okay, here's the breakdown. Tom Tomervik was a three-sport legend at Franklin Pierce High and led his team to the state tournament while averaging 18 points per game. From there, it was off to Pullman to ply his trade on the hardwood against the Wizard of Westwood's Bruins in the Pac-8, where he earned all coast honors his senior season. The Huskies knew they got a steal in Curtis Allen, who didn't disappoint, leading the Dogs in steals his freshman year. Coming out of Wilson High School, Allen was Class 4A Player of the Year and led the Rams to three consecutive state tournament appearances. He finished his career as the most accurate free-throw shooter in UW history, ranked second all-time in three-point field goals made, eighth all-time in assists, and tenth in steals. Yes, a real steal indeed. Casey Calvary averaged 22 points and 10 boards his senior year at Bellarmine, and his career continued to skyrocket, finishing as the seventh leading scorer in Gonzaga history. Not only did he possess a deft shooting touch for a big man, Casey also was the West Coast Conference's all-time leader in career block shots upon graduation and garnered WCC Player of the Year honors before embarking on a pro career in Europe. It was quite a year for the Curtis Vikings when it came to sports. Undefeated state champs in both football and basketball during the 1970-71 school year, they were also the highest-placing 2A team in the 3A state track meet that same year. 
the Hoop Squad, led by Coach Gerald Redberg, dominated the competition all year long with the closest game still an 11-point victory. They scored fewer than 70 points only three times all year long and had five players who scored in double figures. The Vikes were the most well-balanced and highest-scoring team the state has ever seen. Kay Koppelman Peterson of Puyallup and Robin Clark Sharp of Clover Park took similar paths to basketball stardom at Gonzaga and Oregon State, respectively. Both were volleyball and track and field standouts, but it was basketball that earned them scholarships to extend their careers. A dominant power forward, Koppelman led the Puyallup Vikes to three consecutive state tournament appearances while not losing a league game in three years. She was a first-team All-West Coast Conference honoree her senior year and still holds the career rebound record. For Clark, who placed third in the high jump in the state track and field meet, she led the Warriors to a state championship in 1978 and a third place finish in 1979, averaging 17 points and 12 rebounds per game as a senior. The six-foot forward defensive specialist for the Beavers finished 10th in career rebounds and 8th in steals and played professionally in Europe before returning to coach at her alma mater. Dave Kenkella enjoyed All-America honors as a guard at both Mount Tahoma and the University of Puget Sound during the glory days of the Loggers. He also enjoyed a successful coaching career with the Rogers Rams before getting involved in the athletic administration field. On the defensive side of the ball, our next Hall of Famer, two-time captain Steve Ridgway, patrolled the defense for the Pacific Lutheran University Lutes under coach Frosty Westering and defensive coordinator Paul Hosef. Ridgway, a second-team Little All-American, finished with 592 career tackles and scored four touchdowns. Amazing for a defensive player. At 6 feet, 7 inches, 235 pounds, Big Joe Williams was known as the first big man in Tacoma City League football program. And as a center and defensive end for Norm Mayer's state championship team, he enjoyed success with Hall of Famers Luther Carr, Dwayne Lowell, and Jack Walters while paving the way for brothers Jerry and Dave Williams. He also played center on the basketball team and participated in track. A lifelong loot. Paul Hoseth was an assistant football coach at PLU for almost 30 years, and as a defensive coordinator, he coached 12 NAIA All-Americans and helped the Lutes win three NAIA national championships. He then spent the next nine years as athletic director, leading the school in their transition from NAIA to NCAA Division III status. Ask Jack Sontag about his athletic accomplishments, and he'll spend hours talking about the relationships formed with his players, the sharing of funny stories, and the opportunity to be there for his players in times of need. Statistics and records were not important to Jack, but it's hard to hide the fact that his 1975 Foss High School football team won the state crown with a perfect 12-0 record, and he did love his beanie. Jumping literally into gymnastics, we meet a bouncing bubbly bundle of energy and L.A. Malding McDaniel, whose gyrations with the Puget Sound School of Gymnastics led to a spot on the roster of the USA team that competed in the U.S. Olympic Sports Festival. As a Puyallup Vike, she competed in three state meets and also participated in the U.S. championships while being crowned the 1987 Elite National Beam Champion. Just for kicks, let's check out Danny Vaughn, who was selected team captain on Wilson's first ever soccer team back in 1974, a product of the local Tacoma Pierce County Junior Soccer Association. From there, he enjoyed success at the University of Washington before embarking on a pro career in Detroit, Memphis, Calgary, and Jacksonville, playing six seasons outdoor, three indoor. Sounds like Danny really did get his kicks on Route 66. In the early 40s, Tacoma was a hotbed for fast-pitch softball due to the war years and saw a migration of some of the top pitchers in the country relocate to the Northwest for their military obligations with the Coast Guard and Army in particular. That helped hone the skills of the local talent who had to rise to the occasion to compete successfully, and rise they did. Earl Mankey was born too early to compete in ABC's Superstars competition, but he would have been a contender as he was a forpal threat. Softball, golf, bowling, and basketball. And wife Mary was the princess of patience as Earl spent virtually every evening on the diamonds, courts, alleys, and links honing his game and leading his teams to victory after victory. Nally's, Jensen Fuel, Broadway Sports Center, and Don's Pagoda were just a few of the teams that he played for, but his greatest success was as a shortstop for the Tacoma Elks fast pitch team. So good was he that Earl was added to the store's machinist roster in 1945 when they traveled to the National ASA Softball Tournament in Cleveland and finished third. Earl started three of the five games and hit 333 for the team. He may have been diminutive in stature, but he was big in the hearts of his teammates. At 6 feet 3 inches, Elks teammate Bob Frankowski towered over the competition, and as an underarm figure 8 pitcher, he was an imposing sight, firing a softball from 43 feet away. He and Mankey were the mainstays on the Elks teams in the late 40s and early 50s, and the team placed in several regional and state tournaments. 
Bob finished his career with the Irwin Jones Dodgers team that finished second at the 1952 National Championships. Behind every good athlete and every manicured field, there are those key individuals who work so people can play. And from the 50s through the mid-80s, one of those people was Steve Orfanos. The Greek devoted much of his life to the Metropolitan Park District and fast pitch and slow pitch programs, serving as superintendent of recreation and the Northwest ASA softball commissioner, respectively. He was a master at juggling responsibilities, running tournaments, and unparalleled when it came to scheduling leagues and tournaments. Steve was one of a kind. On the field, Joe Kilby earned his nickname, Killer, fair and square. See the ball, kill the ball. See an opponent, crush the opponent. Off the field, Joe was a happy-go-lucky guy who knew how to have fun and knew how to love everyone. After all, he buried his lovely wife, Jill, on Valentine's Day. Joe played slow-pitch softball for 33 years and was named to two all-world teams as a player and one as a coach, in addition to being inducted into the state of Washington Slow-Pitch Softball Hall of Fame. He played shortstop, third, first, and in the outfield, but it was his craftiness as a knuckleball-throwing pitcher and his killer mentality as a home run hitter that earned him accolades as one of the best. You think Flipper was good? Take a look at these three swimming greats. Casey Klein Lemon enjoyed a superlative college career at Brigham Young University where she earned five NCAA All-America awards and finished in the top 10 in the backstroke at the NCAA championships for four years. A Tacoma Swim Club senior national team member, Casey was the WAC Swimmer of the Year in 1991. Jamie Reed is quick to acknowledge her success at the collegiate, national, and international level thanks to her involvement with the Puyallup Aquatic Club, but Reed's determination and work ethic instilled by her parents and coaches at a young age didn't hurt either. Reed was a three-time national champion in the 200-meter backstroke and a gold medalist at the 2003 Pan American Games, established an SEC record time of 154.54 in the 200-meter backstroke while swimming for the University of Florida, participated in the 2000 and 2004 Olympic trials, and was an SEC academic All-American. Another swimmer with ties to the SEC is Wilson High's Evan Martinek. With Evan earning the High Point Award three years in a row, the Rams won three state championships, and he still holds the state 100 backstroke record. At Louisiana State University, Evan's success continued, holding school records in both the 100 and 200 backstroke and earning nine All-America honors. Now that's worth flipping over. Daryl Talley either really liked track and field and cross country or the kids he came in contact with, but considering that he coached for a combined 40 seasons while at Clover Park High School, it was probably both. And that doesn't even count when he coached football and wrestling for the Warriors while teaching physical education for 16 years, officiating football and basketball, and serving as a school and district athletic director as well. Dedication, admiration, and respect are what he earned and what he gave back to Clover Park standouts such as Mac Wilkins, Wes Smiley, Bob Brandon, Dean Geraltz, Donna Dennis, Steve Kitchen, and a host of others. Speaking of Smiley, he should be. Smiling, that is. He was coached by one of the best in the state, was a state cross-country champion in 1967, and the state one-mile titleist in 1968, the same year the Warriors won the team crown. He then enjoyed a successful college career as a three-year letterman at the University of Oregon under Bill Bowerman and alongside track greats Steve Prefontaine, Mac Wilkins, and Lincoln distance great Pat Tyson. When talking bragging rights, Joel Bragg certainly had the birthright to do that, and when he cleared 7 feet 1 and a quarter inches on May 15, 1971 at a Tacoma City League meet in Lincoln Bowl, he became the first high jumper in state history to clear 7 feet. Wow, that is really high. Not noted for hyperbole, Bragg's coach Dan Watson crowed, Joel's effort has to be the greatest track and field performance I've ever had. Joel went on to jump 7 feet 2 inches in 1972, and that ranked fifth in the world at the time. Of course, Dan Watson enjoyed a whole stable of outstanding competitors during his coaching career, so when Jackie Davis burst onto the scene and in her senior year held records in the city and district meets in the long jump, 440 dash, 220 dash, and 440 relay, and then proceeded to earn 26 and a half of Lincoln's 38 points in the state track meet, single-handedly earning the team second place in the competition, what do you think Coach Watson said then? Jackie's effort has to be the greatest track and field performance I've ever had this year. We'll forgive Coach Watson. He was blessed, and so was Jackie, and many more before and after her. One thing for sure, there's no laying around for Patty Lay, whose life has revolved around running forever. 
Her girls' cross-country teams at Gig Harbor won three state team titles and placed second the other three years, and her boys' teams always placed in the top ten. On a personal level, she was the Class 2A state cross-country champion in 1980 and 82 and a two-time state 1,600-meter titleist. Lay still holds PLU school records in the 800, 1,500, 3,000 meters, and that's what we call getting around. As a senior at Lincoln in 1953, Les Kleinsasser pinned his opponent in 37 seconds, winning the 145-pound division at the first All-State Championship held at Washington State University. For his effort, he was named the Outstanding Wrestler of the Tournament. That same year, against mostly college students, he was crowned champion at 145 pounds in the Pacific Northwest Tournament. But perhaps more remarkable is that when the wrestling team at Bethel needed transportation to matches due to a failed school levy, Les and his wife Virginia became team chauffeurs for the season to 10 wrestlers and cheerleaders, driving them to the matches in their motor home. Now that's more with Les. Warren Depringer started the wrestling program in 1959 and coached through 1970 with a third place finish in 1962 as his highest team placing. Along the way, he also produced three individual state champions and set the tone for the Warriors to be a perennial contender at the state tournament each season. His lifetime accomplishments resulted in election into the Washington State Wrestling Coaches Hall of Fame in 1991 and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2005. Joining Warren in the State Hall of Fame is the elder statesman of the wrestling contingent, former Puyallup wrestling coach Ray Barnes. During 14 seasons, his bikes won 115 dual matches, including five SPSL titles and six district crowns. Ray later became the athletic director for the Puyallup School District, earning a spot in the State Athletic Directors Hall of Fame in 1991. Ray was a Puyallup High grad and participated in football and track for the Vikings, earning all-conference and all-state honors in football and garnering little All-American honorable mention status as a guard on the gridiron for PLC. The 1996 Bethel High School volleyball team was a showcase in dominance, racking up a perfect 34-0 record to win the state 3A championship under first-year coach John Riappel. Despite losing three all-league players from the previous season, the Braves still returned seven varsity players who were battle-tested from a sixth-place state finish the year before. So when coach Kevin Aoki turned over the reins to John in his first year, it's not like he left the cupboard bare for Rio, his assistant coach for eight seasons, with Dory Bartouche, Donja Walker, and Jordan Ginger leading the charge as first team all league selections, the well balanced Braves thrashed Prairie 15 5, 15 4 to capture the crown in convincing fashion. Not much more to go now, but before we high five these great athletes and their accomplishments, let's not forget those unsung heroes whose efforts behind the scenes often go unappreciated. Bumps and bruises, cuts and contusions, they're all part of the game, but we can thank doctors Sam Adams and Robert Johnson for getting our athletes ready for the daily grind. Starting in 1960, Sam Adams was the team physician for Tacoma Professional Baseball Clubs for nearly 30 years. He treated a host of Giants, Cubs, Twins, Yankees, Tugs, and Tigers, and occasionally fans at Cheney Stadium. Doc Adams also volunteered for many Golden Gloves boxing events hosted by the Tacoma Athletic Commission. Bob Johnson, a native Tacoma who graduated from Stadium High and the University of Puget Sound, founded the Student Health Services at UPS in 1957 and became the school's first team physician. And it was Doc Jay, along with Zeke Schultz, who developed and grew the sports medicine program for the loggers, making athlete care, rehabilitation, and early diagnosis services unmatched, even at much larger institutions. Fair, even-keeled, and diplomatic, best described Bruce Osborne and Jan Walcott, who collectively have devoted over 90 years to officiating. Bruce has officiated at nearly every league and regional wrestling competition since he started 46 years ago. And in addition to working several state tournaments, he's been the head official for the last three years at Matt Classic, the all-classification state extravaganza held at the Tacoma Dome. A member of the Western Washington Wrestling Officials Association, he's been instrumental in the developmental training programs for new officials. Jan Walcott has been involved with the Western Washington Football and Basketball Association since 1965 and has worked high school varsity and small college football and basketball games during his extensive career. Having been mentored by Tom Cross, known throughout the state as the father of officiating, Walcott was never really given a choice not to officiate, and it was just kind of expected. And after 32 years as the assigning secretary for football, he shows no signs of slowing down, whether it be bicycling on the foothills trails, rounding the senior softball base paths, or running up and down the courts and fields throughout Pierce County.
Nelson Hong left a permanent mark on the South Sound sports scene as sports editor for the Tacoma News Tribune from 1930 to 1937. His column, Between You and Me, created an intimate relationship between reader and writer, and his insights were always entertaining to sports fans. He was passionate about baseball and helped reorganize Tacoma's City Baseball League during the 1930s. He served as the first secretary of the Western International League in 1937 and worked as business manager of the Tacoma Tigers during the 1938 and 39 seasons. This closes another chapter on the state of Washington and Tacoma Pierce County Sports Hall of Fame. And we hope you'll agree that the class of 2010 is a pretty impressive lot. Please join us as we congratulate them all on their outstanding careers.